Hi, this is Sash. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to traverse a graph using an algorithm called Depth First Search. Here is a director graph. We'd like to write a program that can explore its topology. And we can do this using what's called a traversal. The objective of a traversal is to navigate the graph so as to know how its vertices are connected to each other, which vertices can be reached from which other vertices, and so on. In the process of a traversal, every vertex and every edge is examined. There are two standard traversal algorithms that are used as building blocks in practical graph applications. Depth First Search or DFS, which I will take up now, and Breadth First Search or BFS, which I'll cover in another tutorial. They differ in the way they sequence the choice of vertices and edges to explore the topology of a graph. This video describes the DFS algorithm. In the next video, I will show how to implement DFS in Java. The traversal must start at some vertex. It doesn't actually matter which. Suppose we start at vertex A. Next, we can choose to either take edge AB to go to vertex B or edge AC to go to vertex C. Let's take AB, which takes us to B. Since we need to trace the entire graph, we'll have to return to the edge AC later, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, from B we take the edge BD, and then from D we take DE. Now we're at a dead end. So we will need to backtrack and find other paths to take in the graph, if there are any. Before we do that, notice that starting at A, we went as deep down the graph as we could along some path before coming to a dead end. This is the characteristic feature of that first search. All right, we backtrack to D. This is not done via an edge, so we need to somehow remember that we were at D before we went to E, so that we can jump back to D. At D, we backtrack to B. At B, we backtrack to A. At A, we can now take the edge AC to go to C. Now, at C, there's the edge CD. However, if we take that edge and get to D, we will then take the edge DE, but we have already seen that edge. We don't want to repeat edges or paths that we have already examined. To ensure this, we need to have a way of knowing that we have already been to a vertex so that we don't go there again. This can be done by planting a marker when we visit a vertex. So let's repeat the DFS process and this time mark vertices as they're visited. Here goes. Start at A. Mark it as visited. Now when we consider an edge, we want to first check to make sure that its other endpoint is not yet visited. I'll show the check with a question mark. B is not visited, so we proceed to B, and so on. At C, the check shows that D has been visited, so we won't go there again, which has us backing up to A. At A, we have looked at both edges, and since A is where we started, we are done. If we were to output the vertex name when we visited, the output sequence would be A, B, D, E, and C. In the graph, the dark edges show the paths taken to get to the vertices. Here's DFS applied to a different graph. The traversal is arbitrarily set to start at A again. When we are at the vertex, we can consider any of the edges going out of the vertex for the next step. So at A, we have edges AB, AC, and AX. There is no particular reason to prefer one over the other. So this time, let's pick AC, then CD, then DE, marking vertices as visited as we go. And here's the rest of the process. Again, remember that out of a vertex, we can consider edges in any order. Backtrack to D. Take DP, take PX, reject XC, backtrack to P, backtrack to D, backtrack to C, backtrack to A. Reject AX, take AB, reject BE, reject BD, backtrack to A, done. The sequence in which vertices were visited is A, C, D, E, P, X, and B. Now, DFS can be done on an undirected graph as well, with no change in the algorithm. The only difference in the execution is that since every edge is undirected, it will be considered twice 
ones from each endpoint. Here goes with the previous graph structure but making the edges undirected instead. And for a change of pace, I'll start at C and also consider edges out of vertices in a different sequence than before. Specifically, I'm going to assume that neighbors of a vertex are stored in alphabetical order of the labels, meaning the neighbors of A are stored in the order B, then C, then X, neighbors of B are stored in the order A, then D, and then E, and so on. Starting at C, neighbor A is visited. Off of A, neighbor B is visited. At B, neighbor A is checked first, seen to be visited, and rejected. Then on to neighbor D, and so on. Okay, now let's take another look at the first graph. We started the traversal at A. In a program, the starting vertex would be picked entirely arbitrarily without regard to its place in the graph. So what if we started at C instead? From C, we will reach D and E. However, A and B will not be reached. The traversal is not done until all vertices are reached, so what do we do? Well, we simply start up DFS at either A or B. These are the unvisited vertices at this point. If we restart at A, we will cover A and B and we will be done. But if we restart at B, we'll, be, we'll back right out and won't reach A. So we'll need to do one more restart at A from where we will back right out again. But we will have reached all the vertices in the graph and DFS would be all done. Let's repeat on the other director graph. Say we start at C. From C, we can reach D, E, P, and X. Then we'll need to restart at some other vertex. Say we pick B. Both the neighbors of B, D, and E are already visited, so no new vertex is reached. That still leaves A out in the cold, so we'll have to restart a third time at A. Not much happens here since all neighbors of A have already been visited. And we're done. In an undirected graph, restarts will only happen if the graph is disconnected, such as here. If we start at any of the vertices in the first island, we will only cover the vertices in that island. To get to the other island, we will need to restart the traversal with some vertex in it, which will then cover all the vertices there. In fact, you can tell how many islands there are in an undirected graph by the number of times you need to start up DFS on it. So, how long does it take to get DFS done on a graph? We start by establishing what operations we will count towards running time. As a traversal progresses through a graph, it really does two things repeatedly. One, it visits a vertex. And two, from a vertex, it checks along every edge to see if that neighbor has been visited or not. So we count each vertex visit and each neighbor check as one unit of time. If the graph has n vertices, the vertex visits would amount to a total of n units. As for the neighbor checks, there's a small variation depending on whether the graph is directed or not. If the graph is directed and has e edges, the neighbor checks would amount to e since each edge contributes one such check. Otherwise, each edge would contribute two checks, since the edge would be involved in a check once from each of its endpoints. This gives a total time units of n plus e for a directed graph, and n plus 2e for an undirected graph, and they both convert to a running time of big O of n plus e. So, what we have seen so far is the DFS algorithm and its running time. In a follow-up video, 
we'll look at the implementation of DFS in Java. See you then.